Hey guys, welcome back to Sip and Dip with Chelsea. For today's video, I am sharing 10 things that I wish I knew when I was starting dip powder nails at home. So basically, these are 10 things that if I could, I would tell myself seven years ago when I started doing my own nails. The very first thing that I would tell myself is just because it works for them doesn't mean it's going to work for me. Just like all of you, when I was starting out, I did what everybody does, which is I go to Facebook groups, YouTube, I'm Google searching, trying to figure out why are my nails lifting? Why are my nails cracking? And trying to understand the very overwhelming world of dip powder. All of us have different nail lengths, shapes, chemistry. So I might have oily nails, you might not. And a lot of the things that are out there on the internet are what is working best for them. And it's okay if it doesn't work for you. When I was searching for why are my dip powder nails lifting, this product just kept coming up in Facebook groups. So of course I bought it. And y'all, it made my lifting worse. And it could be user error. I'm not blaming it on the product. However, it just goes to show just because a certain product or a technique works for someone else doesn't mean it's going to work for you and that is okay. So speaking of trying new things and trying to figure out what works best for you, if I could tell myself seven years ago when trying to figure out what technique I need for my nails in lifestyle, I would tell myself to slow down and try one new product or one new thing at a time. Because what happens is when you're trying out, let's say a new brand of liquids and now you've got a glass cuticle pusher and you're trying uh, all these different techniques, okay? It is so hard to pinpoint what actually worked. So if you are trying to figure out why your nails are cracking, why your nails are lifting, don't buy all the things and do all the things. Change just one little thing at a time to figure out what really is the cause. Because if you do all of these different products, you're going to end up realizing you have no clue what actually worked. And again, these are gonna be tips that I would tell myself because I am guilty of doing all the things. Speaking of trying new things, I used to use the same brand of powders and the same brand of liquids for years before I ventured out and tried different things. What I quickly learned is that not all liquids are the same. You know, you're thinking, no duh, Chelsea, but you have to remember seven years ago, there wasn't a whole lot of information out there on dip powder and there definitely wasn't a whole lot of brands. I could tell my younger self this, it would be that there are so many different liquid types out there and to explore them and see what you like and what you don't like. There is different liquid dry times, different liquid consistencies, so it can be thick, thin, medium. Then there's also gonna be different levels, in my opinion, of contaminating. So some liquids contaminate easier than others. And each person is going to have a preference on liquids. So if you're a mom, you may not like slow drying liquids. You may want them to dry fast, boom, 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 and you're done. Or maybe if you're a beginner, you do want slower drying liquids so you don't feel rushed. Or if you're doing designs, there are so many pieces to this puzzle. And if I could give any piece of advice, it would be to try different liquids. If you feel like liquids are always contaminating or you're really struggling with keeping it off of your skin, you know, besides of course user error and practice and things that go along with learning dip powder nails at home, it is okay to experiment and try different brands of liquid. So you can find the brand that works best for you. All right, while we talk about liquids, we have to talk about liquid care because old Chelsea knew nothing about liquid care. I used to keep like three sets of liquids on hand at all times because my base brush would get thick, goopy, hardened. My top coat was always messed up. And if I could tell old Chelsea this, it would be to just take care of the liquids during the manicure process, that would solve all of those issues of wasted products. Let me show you what I mean. We're gonna pretend this swatch stick is my natural nail and we're applying our base liquid. So we don't want to return it right back to the bottle because if it accidentally touches any oils on our skin or our nail, it could contaminate the bottle. So always wipe that brush off before returning it back. Same goes for the second layer. After you've dusted off the excess powder really, really well, we're applying our base liquid, but it's still possible that we're gonna get some of that 
that excess powder on our base liquid brush. If we return this right now, right back to the bottle, we could be putting some of the powder in there, any of our natural oils, anything like that can contaminate our liquid. So don't return it right back. Wipe it off before returning it to the bottle. Once we're all done, we need to wipe off the excess on the rim. Do you see that shine there? That will absolutely make your liquids seal shut. So I'm just using a dry paper towel. And once you close it up, if you've ever had it sealed completely shut, that can be why. Same rules go for the top coat. So I'm always really careful about getting this product wiped off before I return it to the bottle. If you want a super in-depth tutorial on liquid care, I'm going to leave that video linked up above. And of course, we can't forget about keeping our liquids upright and in a shaded area, so not in direct sunlight and not stored on their sides under your bed like I used to do. Speaking of contaminated liquids, a little fun fact don't come for me on this, okay? Because I haven't tried it with every single brand that would be literally impossible. However, some brands, you can actually interchange the base coat and the top coat. So you might be thinking, why would you even need to do that? If you go and mess up your base coat and you are in the middle of a manicure, you can actually use your top coat in place of this. Same goes for your top coat. So if you're in the middle of doing your top coat and the brush hardens, you can use your base coat instead. Of course, again, you guys, this is a huge gray area, so you have to try it out first. I don't know that it works with every single brand, but for the brands that I have tried it with, it worked beautifully. If you do wanna see if it works for you and you're in a bind, I would suggest trying it on a swatch stick first and then you'll know how it's going to work. But I know a lot of us that would save a ton of heartache and a ton of wasted money if you do find yourself in a bind where one of these bottles has contaminated and you can't use it anymore. I also have a video that goes really into depth on this and tests out the theory. So I'm gonna link that video up above here in the cards. So if you wanna check out that video. Can't talk about liquids without talking about dip flu. So dip flu is when you have an allergic reaction to either the liquids or the powders. This can look different for a lot of different people. It could be watery eyes, a runny nose, a headache. It can happen immediately. It can happen a day later. It can be irritated skin. So many different things. And remember, I am not a professional. I am just a DIYer and I am definitely not a medical professional. So if you have any of those symptoms, obviously please consult a medical professional instead of coming to YouTube. But I just wanna explain, this is something that really I had no clue about and I definitely didn't experience until we moved to Maryland. So in Florida, I always had ceiling fans running, the AC was always running. And when we moved to Maryland, I realized in the winter that I was going through dip flu. So it started as feeling like a headache, then it was even just tightness in my chest. I would have the watery eyes and all the things and I did not put two and two together. Remember, I had been dipping for years and I thought I was just getting sick. Like very often I thought I was getting sick and it turned out it was every single night after I would sit to film, I was getting dip flu. So how have I now obviously kept working in this situation? Again, this is not medical advice by any means and it might not even work for you if you have experienced dip flu. These are just gonna be things that have worked for me and I found have alleviated the symptoms so that I can still continue to use regular dip powder liquids. First things first is I wear a mask. So I use these reusable ones. You can also use the disposable ones. I've seen others who suggest the really heavy duty professional grade mask as well. So I think that's gonna depend on the severity of your dip flu. Next, if possible, and it's not winter and you're not cold, try to run a fan. Just remember this can affect the dry time of your liquids. This desk air purifier was honestly a game changer for me. I love it so much. It's right here on my desk. You can just judge by the size of my hand next to it. So basically what it does is it sucks in the odors down here at the bottom so it's sucking in right where I'm working at and then it pushes the rest of the air out at the top I do think this is also helping with keeping air circulating near me so it's not just stagnant it also has um, several filters inside it's got different speeds up here on top it's not too loud 
but it really has helped me tremendously with the odor. I know it's not always possible, but you can definitely do dip powder nails outside. It can affect the dry time, but this can help with it being a small enclosed space. So if you have to do nails inside, make sure it's a big open space. And of course we can't forget the odorless dip powder option. So there are options out there that have no or low odor. They're Sparkle & Co, Color of My World, Revel. These are just three that I have personally tried. I've got lots of reviews on my channel of this. And there's also the gel method. So there are options out there that I wish I would have known about before I even ventured into dip powder because it can happen. This one might seem like a no brainer, but old Chelsea that was using the same brand for years, I would have loved to have told her that not all powders are created equal. So just like liquids are different, powders and brands and formulas are also very different. So to better explain textures and consistencies, right here I have granulated sugar. So the way sugar feels is not how a dip powder should feel, unless it's a glitter or it's actually supposed to be a sugared dip powder. It shouldn't feel gritty like sugar or salt. It should actually feel fluffy like powdered sugar. Speaking of powdered sugar, that's what I have here. So although it should feel like powdered sugar consistency, it should not be clumpy. So you see these clumps here? That can be for a few reasons. If you stir it up and it comes out perfect, then that's great. It can also be because you have moisture in the dip powder. But if you stir it, sometimes some powders that are glows or thermals or changers like that can be a little bit more dense. So it is normal for it to be dense, but definitely not clumpy if you stir it up and it still won't loosen up. All right, so now we need to look closely at this one. Do you see all of those tiny little red dots? That is red pigment in this pink dip powder that was not blended properly. So this is something that I've now known to look out for. So if you ever see that, that could be because the dip powder was not properly blended or blended enough. Another thing that I'm on the lookout for now that I've tried lots of different brands out is if the powder is full coverage in two layers. This is just my own personal ick. This dip powder here is supposed to be a full coverage glitter. And as you can see, this is two layers and it is so sheer. Now, again, I'm not talking about shears, jellies, toppers, any of that. I'm just talking in general for solid shades or dip powders that are meant to be full coverage. I truly believe they should be full coverage after two layers. I like some glitter, chunky glitters from some brands, but I don't like their solids. And I like some solids from some brands, but I don't like their chunky glitters. So until you venture out and try out different brands, small businesses, the Amazon ones, large businesses, you really won't know what you even enjoy and like. All right, so this one is a personal attack on myself. Buy the clear powder. Oh my gosh, story time here. When I started out, the very first powder that I bought was clear dip powder, but my intention was to just put nail polish on top. Once I realized how time consuming that was to do the dip powder, do the nail polish, and then it really wasn't the way I wanted it to look, I started to just buy the color dip powder because it's so much faster and easier. The very first powder that I sold was clear dip powder. I sold it on one of those Facebook groups. I didn't think I needed it. I'm like, why would I need it? I wanna just do the color dip powder, but y'all, by the clear. Clear is so versatile. You can use clear to build up strength on your natural nails. So if you want to do just color on top, all you have to do is just file off that color and you still have your clear base and you can fill it in. You can use clear to protect the color dip powder because I know a lot of times some people say they just do color and they don't do clear, but I can tell you from personal experience that that does not always work for every color. Some of those darker dip powders, if you file too much, you're gonna file into the color. Some neon shades, pastel shades. So for me personally, it's just not worth the gamble and I put it on everything. I will put it on every color, every glitter, everything, especially glitters. Speaking of glitters and shimmers, if you don't protect it with clear dip powder, when you go to file and buff into it, it can turn those big chunky glitter pieces silver and remove the color on there. This next tip might be silly, but for me, it's a must. It's to buy the cupcake liners. Cupcake liners are like my best friend. I buy a stack of them on Amazon and I run through them like crazy. So when I started out, the only way I knew how to dip was to dip in and you can quickly see it will overflow. It goes all over your desk and it's a mess, but y'all, you can still dip in if you set it in a cupcake liner. It's that simple. So you dip in and if anything overflows, 
it catches in the liner so it's not as messy, it's not as wasteful. Another great thing would be to pour over. So you can pour the dip powder over and it catches in the cupcake liner. And of course with foils or anything else, if you have longer nails, you can pour all of this into the cupcake liner and then lay your nail flat on top. Last tip is probably one of my biggest ones that I wish I could go back and tell myself, which is try the designs, Chelsea, don't be scared. I took years, you guys. I'm like embarrassed to even admit that. It probably took me around three years to try a design. And it sounds so silly, but I think a lot of us, at least myself, I can only speak for myself in this video, is I get anxiety and I worry, oh my gosh, what if I mess it up? What am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to wear this manicure for weeks. What if I take hours and I hate it, but just try it. Practice on a swatch stick first. That's what I always do. I run through swatch sticks like crazy as well. You can also use peel base. So if you don't like the manicure, you can just pop it right off. So it's not a huge commitment. I know it's different because if you're practicing on a swatch stick, it's always so much easier. But if you want to practice on your hand, you can just put down peel base first and practice and then pop it off. And then you can actually do your manicure. Another tip would be when you're trying out designs is to do your dominant hand first because if you're anything like me and you're gonna be sitting there for a while, your eyes get strained, your back gets a little strained, you get tired, grab some water, get a snack, do that dominant hand first before you're already tired. I would love to hear what one of your tips would be to your younger self when you were first getting started with dip powder because I think it's awesome to sit and reflect and see how far you've grown and come, especially if you go back and look at your old pictures. I think you'd be really surprised at what a huge dip powder glow up that you've had. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you'll stick around and subscribe, join our little dip powder community here, and I will see y'all next week.